ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a flat out funny person, Jeannie Robertson. much for coming to this taping of Flat Out Funny at the Paramount Theater here in Burlington, North Carolina. The historic, recently remodeled Paramount Theater. Those of us who grew up in nearby Graham used to come over and go to the picture show on Saturday night in this place. I appreciate you coming here. We're here with Elon University Television Services to produce my next humor program, which is called Flat Out Funny at the Paramount. You cannot you just cannot tape a humor tape without a live audience. And watching y'all come in, I, I became concerned. <laughs> Margaret, could you prop up Tom just a little bit? Just, just give him a little oomph there so he comes up, just to lay out a little bit. If you are here, you got your tickets, or the person who, in your group who got the tickets, got the tickets from Tony Meredith. Now, if you're on the floor right now, you're very happy. You got good seats, you're down here on the main level. And so you like Tony. And up there, it just so happens that at the Paramount, the balcony has great seats. Are y'all up there in the balcony? Yeah, you're there, good. But you might not like Tony quite as much. But the people who are at home on the waiting list to come might be thinking what somebody asked me and I quote, well, who is Tony Meredith? <laughs> and how come, the exact words, how come she's the queen of the tickets? <laughs> well, here is how come Tony is queen of the tickets. I ran my own speaking business for 16 years. By that, I mean I booked the speech, I wrote the speech, I went away and gave the speech, I came back and I did the correspondence. And then in 1979, in the last millennium, <laughs> my fame had spread and people were calling me from places like South Carolina <laughs> and I really realized all of a sudden I need some help or as we say some help I believe that a sense of humor is very important and I needed somebody who could do the clerical jobs I needed, but just as important to me is to work every day with somebody who at least tries to have a sense of humor. I had noticed a woman in the county named Tony Meredith. She was Miss Volunteer, head of every volunteer thing in the county. Not making a whole lot of money, is it now? But <laughs> We had happened to be at Auburn University together as students. So we wound up here, and from talking to her on the phone, I realized she had the clerical skills, she had, certainly had the people skills, but I didn't know about that sense of humor. That's just so difficult to judge in a job interview. At that time, my speaking office was in the laundry room. <laughs> this was the setup. There was the washing machine, then there was the dryer, and then there was a table with the telephone and some boxes with files. And then there was always a dog in there. <laughs> so if the phone rang, you had to swing into action. You had to cut off the washer, cut off the dryer. This was back when we dried our tennis shoes. Thump, thump, thump. Get the dog out in the hall, shut the door, and pick up the telephone. And around the room were stacks of clothes in various stages of clothing life. There would be a dirty stack waiting to get in there clean stack over here waiting to be folded, and then there'd be a wrinkled stack, because you know, if you don't get it out of the dryer in time, <laughs> you don't iron those things. You put it under the sink and get it wet and throw it in the dryer again. <laughs> so Tony came for the interview, and I started to clean it up, but instead I just said, pull up a stack of towels and have a seat. <laughs> and I explained her the situation, all the stuff you had to do and why, she said, I understand. You don't want big corporations to know you're running out of a laundry room, do you? <laughs> I said, that is exactly right. And as we sat there, the telephone rang. And I reached for it. She said, let me pick it up. And she picked it up and turned into administrative professional of the year. 
This is Jeannie Robertson's office. My name is Tony Meredith. What can I do for you today? Well, it struck me funny. <laughs> she was sitting on a stack of dirty pilots. I grabbed a wash rag, stuck it in my mouth to creep so I wouldn't laugh out loud. She said, the light indicating Mrs. Ro Robertson's arrival is not on. <laughs> the light? But sometimes she comes in her back outside entrance. If you'll let me put you on hold, I'll tiptoe down the hall and see if by some chance she has arrived. She put the phone down, started to walk away. Knowing her like I know her now, I'm surprised she didn't turn back, pick up the phone, and pretend to be radio music. <laughs> Ain't no sunshine when you're gone. Boom, boom, boom. She crossed the room. I saw where she was going. Before I could get the wash rag out of her mouth, she stepped over things and went to a closet, and the sporting world, when she opened it, fell out on top of it. Bags, balls, baseballs, everything in the world. She was not phased. She started just kicking it all back in there and shoving it, glanced at me, shut the door. Walked right over and picked up the phone and says, we're in luck. Mrs. Robertson has arrived. I will transfer the call. And she shoved the phone in my face. I would not be outdone. I took that wash rag out of my mouth. I said, this is Jeannie Robertson. What can I do for you today? My husband said, can anybody there take some shirts to the cleaner? <laughs> now, big, big question, because so many, did I hire Tony Meredith? Really wasn't a matter of hiring. Did I beg her to work with me? And that was 28 years ago. And is she still with me today? And folks, that is how come Tony is queen of the tickets. <laughs> I must tell you.